students uh, welcome to thin film technology course lecture number 23 and this lectures we will discuss uh, reactive rf and bias uh, special depositions as a part of thin film depositions i am dr purvez ahmed so let's start the today's lectures from the uh, reactive uh, sputtering uh, it should be remember that sputtering metallic targets and the presence of a reactive uh, gas mixture uh, with inner uh, argon gas. So we should keep in mind uh, the following uh, the following points. I mean, uh, whenever we're trying, uh, I mean, we, we are implying this the sputtering process. Uh, that is, uh, we should say that the reactive sputterings. So whenever we do the metallic sputterings, I mean, we're trying to uh, do the sputterings of the metallic targets in the presence of the reactive gas. Uh, mixed with the argon gas, so we should keep in mind the following point that is, uh, sputtering uh, a compound targets may not give what one wants. I mean, uh, uh, this is, I mean, something beyond the expectation. I mean, we, su we should not expect uh, what we're trying to achieve. So, that's why we are saying that getting a compound targets may not give uh, what one wants. I mean, normally, whenever we're trying to do the sputtering of a particular target, so we have. We have particular materials in mind, uh, so here uh, this is not the case that one should expect. So this is why we are saying that whenever we are sputtering the compound targets, so it may not give uh, what one wants. Uh, so what it means? Uh, this doesn't mean uh, reactor sputtering will give uh, what one wants. Uh, it is just uh, one more thing to try with. So certainly reactor sputterings can be done uh, by using DC sputterings, whereas the compound target uh, can only be used for uh, RF sputtering. I mean, this is the point uh, that we have already mentioned while describing the types of the sputterings. So here, uh, let me repeat it again. Uh, that is, uh, reactive uh, sputterings can be done only uh, by using the DC sputterings, uh, whereas the compound targets uh, from compound targets here we mean so the insulating targets uh, can only be used for uh, RF sputterings. So chemical reactions uh, can take place on the substrate and the targets, uh, though we, we, we are not actually uh, trying to do the intentional chemical reaction inside the sputterings. Uh, but be remembered uh, sometimes uh, the chemical reactions take place on the substrate and the targets. And we already specified the reason that how uh, the chemical reactions can happen in the substrate. Uh, and the targets. Uh, so uh, such a thing can fuzz in the targets. The chemical reaction are faster than the sputter rate. I mean, this is something uh, you can consider as a drawback of the sputtering process uh, that we term as a poison. In a particular case, when we say that the chemicals are, we can say that the unwanted chemical reactions, if they are faster than uh, the required uh, sputter rate. So uh, what actually we need to do, we need to adjust reactive gas flow to get uh, go, uh, good comp uh, compositions. For example, uh, we should get a silicon dioxide rather than uh, other silicon oxide, other silicon trioxide or some more oxide of silicons uh, without incorporating excess gas into uh, the film. So uh, typical reactions uh, might be, uh, I mean, we should have a mixture of the anodes uh, plus uh, reactive gases uh, used for the sputtering. Uh, so a practical example of such a process include uh, if we let's suppose trying to make the oxides, uh, uh, by oxides we mean uh, uh, aluminum oxides or silicon dioxide or tantalum, uh, tantalum uh, oxides, uh, so uh, oxygen molecules mixed with argon. Uh, if you are trying, uh, I mean so a nitride, so the nitride example uh, is include tantalum nitride, titanium nitride, uh, silicon nitride, uh, and uh, this kind of the reaction, the reactive gases are used for the sputterings. Uh, I mean, with along with the inert gas, uh, is included nitrogen, uh, ammonia, uh, mixed with the argon. Uh, but if all, uh, uh, the gases are carbides. I mean, we're trying to do the car to make the carbides. Uh, so the carbide include titanium carbides, tungsten carbide, silicon carbide. In such cases, the reactive gases uh, 
uh, that we use for the sputterings uh, along with the mixture of the air gases uh, it includes CH4, uh, C2H4, C3H8 uh, and all these uh, they are being mixed with the uh, organs. So radio frequency sputter depositions uh, in case of uh, radio sputter depositions uh, you know the fact uh, that we have already discussed in the lecture that is uh, radio frequency sputtering is particularly good for the insulating materials and why it's good for uh, insulating materials uh, because positive charge build up on the cathode targets and the DC sputtering systems so alternatively uh, uh, alternative potentials can avoid charge uh, build up I mean here you can see that uh, we have uh, we have the systems uh, the sputtering system that is uh, we have switched uh, polarities uh, before the target surface uh, saturates with ions so here you can see it by yourself and this is the particular uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the sputtering arrangements that is here we have the targets uh, along with the targets we have some cooling process and this is the shutters and the substrate the, you know the substrate here we are providing the uh, the heating and the cooling systems and uh, uh, this is the radio frequency uh, I mean so the radio frequency source and uh, the, the frequency that we applied is equal to 13.56 uh, megahertz are uh, for heating uh, for, uh, to pro providing the proper heating environment so what we have uh, when the frequency is less than uh, approximately 50 kilohertz uh, both electrons and ions can flow uh, uh, the switching of the anode and the cathode so basically DC is sputtering up both the surfaces so when the frequency are well above 50 kilohertz uh, ion can no longer follow the switchings and electron can neutralize positive charge buildup on each electrode uh, during uh, each half cycles similarly as uh, now uh, electron gain energy directly from the RF powders uh, uh, it means that uh, no need of secondary electrons to maintain the plasma that normally we do in uh, a journal's uh, a sputtering process. Uh, so in such a case, uh, an oscillating electrons are more efficient to ionize the gas. Uh, therefore, RF sputtering is capable of running in the lower pressures uh, that is uh, in the range of 1 to 15 uh, millitar. So fewer gas uh, collisions and more lines of the side uh, diffusions so th that's that's what we have an RF sputter uh, diffusions and uh, that we deal with some particular uh, uh, steps uh, in a particular environment so what happened in the RF plasma uh, in RF plasma just like you can see it here the arrangement uh, we have uh, the, uh, the two figures uh, and these figures uh, you can see the sputtering arrangement the RF sputtering arrangement and here we have applied a drop uh, between the applied uh, the voltage uh, between the two electrodes and the area uh, the equal area uh, between the, the equal area and the unequal areas uh, between the electrode so how the thing process uh, so for uh, symmetric targeted substrate configurations uh, sputterings of both the surfaces will occur uh, though in the opposite half cycles so uh, what happened then uh, when the electrode area when the electrode area are not equal just like we can see it here here you can see the electrodes uh, area uh, are not equal that is we have unequal area electrode which in other words means smaller at electrode at the left I mean this is the uh, this is the left hand side and this is the right hand side and this is the unequal area electrode uh, or we mean to say smaller electrode at the left so what it means uh, when the electrode area is not equal uh, the field must be higher at the smaller electrode so this is this is the smaller electrode so it means that the field uh, the field should be higher at this electrode what it means it means that uh, here we should have the higher current density uh, to maintain the overall uh, current continuity so uh, it was found that the voltage drop across the dark sheets of the two electrodes uh, satisfy the relations uh, what's the relations the relation that is uh, a is the area of the electrode I mean here uh, is the area of the electrodes and we have uh, 
the required potential that is uh, the V1 potentials, it's the V2 potentials. So we have the relations that is uh, V1 by V2 is equal to A2 by A1 whole raised to the power M. Uh, be remember here M is equal to, uh, I mean, the range of 1 to 2, uh, and this is the experimentally calculated value. Let me repeat it again. It was found that the voltage drop, uh, the voltage drop here, from the voltage drop it means here, I mean, uh, when you start the process, the unequal area of the electrode, and we proceed with the, uh, uh, with the voltage drop, that is initially we have the voltage V1, and when we move toward the left, so we reach to the final voltage that we denoted by the v, uh, V2. So the voltage drop across the dark sheet of the two electrodes satisfy the relations, which is given by uh, V1 divided by V2 is equal to A2 divided by A1 whole raised to the power M, uh, where M has the value in the range of 1 to 2. Uh, and be remember, this is the uh, experimental calculated value. So that's by making the target electrode uh, much smaller. Uh, sputterings occurs only on the targets. I mean, in such a conditions, uh, uh, when we uh, uh, when we make the electrode uh, much smaller, so in such a conditions, uh, the sputtering though the sputtering occurs, but it's only occur on the uh, the targets. I mean, it's not occurring on the wall. So vapor electrodes, a uh, vapor electrode can also be connected to the chamber walls. Uh, for further increasing the V2 by V1's ratio. I mean, whenever we're trying to further increase the V2 or V1 ratio, so for that, what we have to do, we have to, uh, I mean, we have to connect, uh, uh, we have to connect the vapor electrode to the chamber wall. I mean, this is the only way to increase the ratio between uh, uh, the voltage V2 and V1. Bias sputtered repositions uh, are a small negative bias at the uh, vapor tongue. So here we can see uh, we have these arrangements. Uh, uh, we have the, uh, the materials and that materials uh, we strike with the organs, ions, and we try to uh, redeposit this material. So this is sort of one mechanism for the improved step coverage. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, one mechanism for improved step coverage is to uh, is redeposition of the sputtering film materials. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, the redepositions, uh, some sort of the redepositions of the sputtering films uh, materials. So, what actually normally happens, uh, vapor chunks no longer connected to uh, chamber walls. So, one can apply a negative DC or added bias, uh, that is a self generated bias across the sheet regions relative to chamber walls. So, with that, more bombardment or edge of the substrate will occur, but deposition rate is faster than the etching rate. So obviously, uh, the net deposition rate is slower uh, than the regular. I mean, uh, uh, the regular we perform uh, without biasing. Uh, uh, so sputter depositions will uh, occur. Uh, let me repeat it again. You shouldn't confuse with the step. So obviously, uh, the net deposition rate is lower than the regular sputter depositions. I mean, in, in the redeposition process, uh, when we try to redeposition uh, of the materials, so for the redepositions, uh, what actually we say, we are saying that, and redepositions, uh, the net deposition rate is lower than the uh, regular sputter depositions. So increased bombardment of the film may improve uh, the film quality, and it can be used for vapor cleaning before deposition are used to improve the step coverage. I mean, such a process, that is the process of re, uh, the process of redepositions uh, can be done for war. I mean, there we have some special process for the redeposition. That is, it can be used for the wafers, for the wafer cleanings uh, before the depositions, or it can be used to improve the step coverage. I mean, if you are interesting uh, in wafer cleanings, uh, or we are interesting to improve the step coverage, so for that, the re, we, we can do the re-depositions uh, uh, or re uh by just, uh, uh, I mean, so, uh, with the negative DC or uh, uh, RF bias, uh, we can easily do the uh, redepositions of the uh, target materials. So one mechanism for the improved step coverage is uh, redepositions that we already mentioned of the sputter materials onto 
uh, onto the vertical uh, side wall uh, that you can see it here and this particular uh, figure. So let me repeat it again. Uh, what actually is uh, we are trying to do, or what is happening in by sputter depositions? So by sputter deposition, actually we applied a negative DC or RF bias uh, relative to the chamber walls. I mean these are the chamber wall. Let's suppose these are the chamber walls. So we are trying to do uh, what we are trying to do the bias sputterings. So for the bias sputtering, the condition is we have to apply negative DC or RF bias uh, relative to the chamber walls. So what happens if we do this? So what happens? Uh, we have more bombardment of the substrate, uh, more bombardment or etching of the substrate. But we remember here in this particular case, uh, the decomposition rate is faster than the etching rate. So the net deposition rate uh, in this particular uh, situation, that is reach depositing of the material, is lower than the uh, than the regular sputtering depositions. So increased bombardment of the film may improve the film quality, and this can be used. That is the redepositions or the by sputtering depositions. Uh, it can be used for the wafer cleanings before the regular depositions, or it can be used to improve the strap coverage as well. So one mechanism for this tube uh, for the improved step coverage is uh, redeposition of the sputter materials on the vertical side wall, just like you can see it here in this particular figure. So that's all we have for this lecture. Thanks for watching. See you uh, in next lecture with more detail about thin film. Till then, bye bye.